Here's an update on my video production workflow in Linux. I've bounced between a couple cameras for capturing the video and even use my phone, but the consistent theme is I've been capturing HD or 4K at 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second, depending on the actual project, at various bit rates, depending on the situation, using the H.264 codec. After I've captured the video, I usually sync it with my audio. I'm recording audio separately, either on a Zoom H4n, or in this case right now, I'm recording audio directly into the computer using Audacity. I use Audacity just to record and capture my audio. And then I'll take the H.264 video from the cameras and the audio file into the video editing software. Before it was a lot of Caden Live mixed with Lightworks. Right now, I'm gonna dedicate the foreseeable future into learning and dedicating time to Lightworks and learning Lightworks inside and out. I'll explain a bit more of why that is in a minute, but Lightworks is gonna be my main central tool for building the videos. So I shoot, shoot the video on the cameras I mentioned and the codecs I mentioned and the audio recording in Audacity and I'll bring them into Lightworks and Lightworks will be the video editor that I'm using right now. Now even for simple videos I need some graphics. A lot of times I'll just do simple text graphics within the video editor and Lightworks is, is, does a solid job of that. So I will use Lightworks for some of the graphics but I will also lean on apps like Inkscape to create some vector graphics that I will use. I will lean on apps like GIMP and Krita still to create some raster based, based graphics or editing photos that I need in the videos. And then I will heavily rely on Blender. And Blender is one app I didn't talk about very much in the last video or two. I actually just forgot about it, but I've used Blender for a very long time. so. I can get back in the swing of Blender because I haven't used Blender in a bit on a regular basis, so I'm trying to watch more tutorials and really get comfortable again using Blender. But Blender is going to be my uh, motion graphics tool. Obviously, for anything three, just anything randomly 3D related, uh, visual effects, I can do in Blender. So it's going to be, it's going to create a lot of motion graphics and still graphics and visual effects for me. So that's going to be the tool I'm leaning on for, for all of that. My long-term goal is to have a, a, a Linux workstation that can run DaVinci Resolve really well. Uh, I can get it to install in this system, but I haven't got it to install and work to actually be able to work with it. So that's the goal, is to have a workstation where I can uh, install DaVinci Resolve and, and have it uh, run really well. Because DaVinci Resolve has a lot of these things built in where I could rely on Fairlight for all my audio mixing. I could do really advanced motion graphics if I want to and visual effects and fusion and all these things. And obviously it has some extremely powerful color, grade, color correction and color grading tools built in. Resolve is, is, a, is a more complete package in that regard than some of these other tools are. So eventually I'd love to, to, to use Resolve. But since I can't use Resolve on this Linux system that I have, but yet I still want to be editing on this Linux system and not go to my Mac or whatever. I'm going to be using these pieces of software combined to create my perfect workflow. Shoot the video, edit the video in Lightworks with complementary graphics from Inkscape and Blender and things like that. And then when I want to finalize the color, I can, I can color it in Lightworks. But then when I want to final, finalize the audio, the cool thing about Lightworks is Lightworks can send a project file, a Reaper project file. It can export a Reaper project file. Then I can go into Reaper and directly open that project file and do some mixing and sound design for the video. That workflow is extremely cool. And it's actually kind of rare to have that seamless of a video editing system to an audio uh, system workflow. This is one of the reasons why I started to look at this workflow as I was playing around with Lightworks and experimenting and learning some things. I saw that feature and I was like, well, that would be very cool if it worked how they say it worked. And so far on my short, on my short experiments, it's worked great. And all I've done is a handful of videos so far in with this workflow and they've just kind of been test things. But this video I'm shooting now will be done this way and pretty much any video here from here on out will be done with this workflow until 
other things change with certain software tools and until my workstation changes. I want to do a dedicated video in Caden Live because there is a lot of amazing things in Caden Live and what they've done with that software is really impressive. But there are a handful of things that aren't working quite yet for me and a few other things that are on their roadmap to add later that will be extremely beneficial, but they're not there yet. Two big hiccups that I have right now with Caden Live that has kind of pushed me to, to Lightworks for right now is one is the eight bit colors only the, the limiting of eight only eight bit color in Caden Live. Now, I don't mind this for my actual video files, ironically, because I'm I'm just capturing eight bit most of the time for my video files. It's really when I create graphics and I want a graphic to have a nice gradient or something like that. It's very difficult to get a, s a smooth look on a gradient um, with the way it renders color in Caden Live. So I don't like the way my graphics look when I ha when they have those elements. And I could I could get around that. I could create more flat looks and things like that and, and work around that. And I have done that so far, but I'd rather not. And Lightworks supplies you with another tool that supports broader color range. The other thing that I can't get working in my Caden Live is the open timeline IO in and out, the, 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 the compatibility with open IO, open timeline IO. I would love to be able to export an open timeline IO file and then bring that into something else or convert that to something else, but I haven't got been able to get that to work in my Caden Live. I thought it was a, a, a flat pack issue, but I've tried multiple things. I've tried, I think I tried a, a, a a native install and not flat pack and it still didn't work. I couldn't get it to work. So I'd love to, I love, I'd love for that feature to work so I can do a workflow that I'm doing now where I can edit the video and then send it to something else to do the audio mix. Now on Caden's live website, they have a roadmap of features they're going to add. And one of the things they have on their roadmap is support for um, third party things like that. So sending it out, sending it out to Reaper or our door for audio mixing. That's going to be awesome because that's right now what I'm using, utilizing in Lightworks. And I would love for the kid in live to have that. I mean, right off the bat, like I said, those two things, if, if, if once they add 10 bit color and they have support, better support for uh, sending projects out or bringing them in, that's going to be a huge game changer for Caden live. But until then, I need to create a workflow where I, I, I have trust in it. I have, I, I know exactly what I can do to get things done or I, or where I'm comfortable in the workflow. I'm comfortable in the, in the results that it kicks out. So that's what I'm creating now. And that's the workflow I've been describing. Now let's talk about the realities of the proprietary versus FOSS software in, in this scenario. My goal is to be completely free and open source software at some point. And that's why I'm rooting for Caden Live and waiting for Caden Live to add some of these things that will check the check the box off of the video editing so side. The other proprietary tool in this workflow that I'm using right now is Reaper. Now, Reaper, much like I view like Obsidian and some other projects, but even though they're not open source, I still want to support small teams like this that create these amazing pro uh, projects and these amazing pieces of software. I'm good with supporting Reaper it's, it, and, and maybe eventually I will use Ardor more and incorporate that and some other audio tools that are free and open source. So right now it's going to be a mix of proprietary and open source like it has been, uh, just different ones. But, you know, eventually my goal is to, 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 to build a complete workstation with Linux based OS and free and open source software from front to back. But for now, it's going to be a mix. Another video I'm going to make is about workflow and my advice to anyone getting into video production, whether it's on Linux, Windows or PC is that is understanding the workflow that you need to create the projects you, you're creating. Uh, what tools do you need to create? And even if you use one tool for a lot of things is break down the steps in your workflow. How much color correction do you do? How much motion graphics do you do? Um, how much editing do you do in the timeline, all these things. And then you can kind of see what other tools 
will do the what other alternate tools will do the job if you switch to Linux or if you have switched to Linux, you kind of plug in those those gaps. But I just want to give you guys an update on my current workflow. I've I bounced around a little bit, but right now it's going to be Lightworks for my main video editing software, uh, Reaper for my audio post work, Blender for motion graphics, and Inkscape, Krita, and Gimp for still related graphics that I'll use in motion graphics and use in the videos as well. Let me know what you guys think about Lightworks if you used it. Maybe I'll do some tips and tricks once I get more comfortable with it. That's it for now, guys. I invite you to like and subscribe. Check out my fourth wall merch shop. Check out the Patreon. And I appreciate every one of my viewers and subscribers. This has been a really fun project so far, and I can't wait to see where it goes.